I was walking in the dark, and I stepped on my only pair of glasses and broke them. I knelt down next to the broken glass and the broken frame, and I said, you help me see so clearly now. What? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> A little voice in the back of my head said, don't drive at night. <laughs> I said, all right. So please, pray for my eyeballs. Or donate yours. But if they're bad, don't, I don't want your eyes if they're bad. I want some good ones. Okay? Do I look like Danny DeVito in this suit? He said, yeah. I said, yeah. I look like Danny DeVito. I mean, is it me? I feel like Danny DeVito right now. I look like It's Palm Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Let me get into this word and um, uh, just see what God has for us today. Um, what, a, what, a, what a special day. What a special time that we're, we're, we're going through. You know, hell and high water couldn't keep me away, uh, and neither could snow and ice. Amen. I was excited to be here in church excited to celebrate this celebration that's been going on for over 2,000 years. <laughs> They've been celebrating this uh, moment, and we get to be a part of it. It's the actual elementary basis of what we believe as men and women of God. We believe this took place. We believe this happened. The prophet uh, Zechariah uh, prophesied this way in advance before it even happened. So we get an opportunity to look at the prophecy beforehand the actual happening, and then the post-happening, which is where we're at. We are celebrating what has happened. Amen? Go to the book of John, chapter 12, verse 12. And I want to I want to learn you today. You want to learn? I'm here to learn you. Amen? We're going to have, we're going to go to school. Amen? Somebody say, but pastor, you dropped out in the eighth grade. How are you going to teach me? Well... That may be true, but I'm still here to learn you. <clears throat> I have a little learning in me, amen? amen? So I want to teach you something today. So that you know what we're celebrating, that you know what we're learning. The Bible says that my people perish through lack of knowledge. If you don't know, if you don't know, I, I, you know, I was at my mom and dad's house, and one of the little girls that they're adopting uh, was, was trying to talk about baseball, but she kept saying football. She had a bat in her hand, and she had a baseball in her hand, and she kept saying uh, football, and uh, and she was she was thinking that she knew how to play, and, and I was thinking that she didn't, amen? But I know better. <laughs> and, you know, how are you going to get into the game if you don't know the rules? Amen. How are you going to get into the mix? How are you going to get into the fight if you don't know the rules? Would you ever step into the fight or into the ring or into the octagon with an MMA fighter if you ain't had no learning, if you ain't had no training, if you didn't know exactly what to do? No, you wouldn't. But sometimes we get thrown in the mix and we don't understand and we don't have the knowledge to defeat or to fight the enemy. Well, today you're going to learn something. Today I'm going to teach you something. And today I hope that it will be a, a weapon in your arsenal. Book of John. Let's see. I want to be done in three hours. So let's see. It's <laughs> the book, of John. book of John chapter 12 verse 12 says, The next day the great crowd that had come for the feast. I'm reading out of the um, Amplified. The next day, the great crowd that had come from the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches, today's Palm Sunday, and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, and his, as it was written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Palm branches. Palm branches. They held palm branches up in the air, singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Why is it significant that they held the palm branches? They've been holding palm branches since Moses' time. Even in Solomon's temple, he, he inscribed palm branches into the arches and into the sides of the walls and in throughout all of his temple, he put pictures up of palm branches. Back in Moses' day, when they would go out into the fields and they would build their huts, they would cover them with palm branches. 
The palm branch is so significant in this particular time that Jesus enters into Jerusalem because when a Jewish person holds a palm branch in their hand, it actually means victory over the enemy. They would never raise a palm branch over their hand until the battle had been won. It all stood for victory. It was like holding up the championship flag. It was like, like a, a foam finger that had the number one on it. It was a palm branch, and it stood for a victory over the enemy. So when Jesus comes into Jerusalem, they didn't grab Christmas trees, and they didn't grab pinon trees. Oh, that's the same tree, huh? They didn't grab, you know, they didn't grab any other tree, but they grabbed palm branches because it was significant. Because they thought that the Jesus was coming in to end the oppression of the, the Romans, and they felt that it was victory over the enemy. So today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we're telling the enemy, we have victory over you. And the way that you know that I have victory over you is that today I wave my palm branch in the air. Can you say amen? amen? Now check this out. Let's go to Luke 19. I'm actually going backwards from John to Matthew instead of from Matthew to John. So let's go to Luke chapter 19. And I want to help you. Let's go. Let's go. Luke chapter 19 verse 20. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem as he approached Bethabag and Bethany, the hill called Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. As you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you untie it, let him or tell him the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it as he went along. People spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place, the road goes down the Mount of Olives. The whole crowd of his disciples began joyfully to praise God in a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees, now here's another key point. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Something that Bishop had mentioned during song service. By the way, the title of my sermon today is called Dress Rehearsal. Dress Rehearsal. Dress Rehearsal. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, now you got to check it out. The religious people are there. The Pharisees and Sadducees are watching the Jewish people walk into our, our uh, uh, accept Jesus as he's coming into the city, and they're raising palm branches in the air, and they're singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, their palm branches in the air, and this is why the Pharisees and Sadducees said, Jesus, tell them to be quiet. Because when a Jewish person holds a palm tree in his hand and waves it, waves it over his head, it's victory over the enemy. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees felt that the Romans would understand that the Jewish people were in revolt, that the Jewish people were going against the rule of the Romans, and they were afraid it was going to cause a war. So he tells them, be quiet. We don't want to tell the Romans that we are going against them. We don't want to tell the Romans that we have victory over them them, so let's just be quiet. And he says, well, if I tell them to be quiet, then the rocks will cry out. So that's why they were so adamant about the people being quiet, because they didn't want to ruffle the feathers of the enemy. Now, I don't know about you, man, but I am a feather ruffler. I'm telling you, I'm a feather ruffler, man. I just see something wrong, and I just got to point it out, you know, if someone try to step over me, because I'm only Six foot two. I mean, five eleven. I mean, five eight. I mean, five five. All right, five four. I'm only five four. So if someone walks and you know five fours me out of the way, man. I'd be like, hey, 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 man, walking through here. And so I can really get down with the people saying, you know what, our Savior is coming, and I want you to know from my mouth that I got victory over you. 
I want you to know right now that there ain't nothing you can do or say because the victory is mine. I've won. I've overcome. I've read the back of the book. I know what happens. I know the ending. The book is always better than the movie. And I read the book and I saw the movie and I know that we win, we win, we win. And I would love to taunt the enemy. Some of my favorite athletes are like uh, Kobe Bryant and uh, uh, Mayweather because they talk a lot of stuff. They just be talking, they talk. But man, when it comes down to it, you know, Kobe Bryant can hit a three or he can dunk on you. Or they call him the Black Mamba. Uh, I'm like the Garden of State compared to him, though. You know, I mean, he's a Black Mamba. And, and he, man, and Mayweather, undefeated, 36 years old, undefeated in every fight. And he just runs his mouth, like, yeah, I get behind him. But I can see, when you know that you won, and when you know you're bad, and when you know you got the backing of 10,000 angels, when you know God says, go ahead, I got your back, then I get David syndrome. Start going out to the middle of the field and challenging giants. Amen? Amen. So I can really understand the people saying, you know what, victory, oh, victory, it is mine. My king is here. Our savior is here. Let me wave my palm branch in the air. And the Pharisees are saying, be quiet. You ever had those people in your life? You just be feeling good one day and you wake up, the birds are chirping, you feel like some more hair is growing in at the top, and you're, you're just excited, you know? And you just, could this be the month, you know, that I, and, and you're just excited, and someone come and just down you, like, so, heard about your kids. Who told you about your kids? But they're quiet, you know, they just come and be like, hey, guess what, guess what I heard? And they just, they just bring you down, you know? You just be feeling good. You're like, you know what? This is it. I'm going to catch up on my bills, man. I'm going to put some money aside, man. I'm going to start living right. I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to start doing right. And then they just call you and be like, so what are you going to do with day victory? Oh, man. I didn't even. That's, what am I going to do? I don't know. what. I, and they, basically, they're saying, just be quiet. When you start feeling, you know, the, the doctor come and give you a bad report in your body, and they give you bad news, and, and, and but you wake up and say, I don't feel like I have cancer. I don't feel like I'm going to die. I don't feel like there's anything wrong. I don't feel like what the doctor said. And then, and then someone just come and be like, well, you will feel it. And then all of a sudden you be like, now that you mention it, I am feeling, you know, you know what I'm saying? I am feeling, maybe I should be quiet. Maybe I should shut up. Maybe I should back down. Maybe I am a loser. Maybe I am depressed. Maybe nothing will never happen for me. Maybe it will never go my way. Maybe it's my destiny to be a loser. Maybe this is as good as it gets. Maybe I passed my prime a long time ago, and all of a sudden you just talk yourself out of it. You should be quiet. So that's why he said be quiet, because he was afraid that it would cause a rift between the Romans and the Jews if the Romans only understood what it meant for a Jew to hold a palm branch over their head. Let's go to <coughs> Matthew. Oh, you know what? Actually, I, let's not go to Matthew. Watch this. Let's stay in Luke. Let's, let's go back and just read three verses in the beginning here. After that, uh, go back to 28. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead go, and going up to Jerusalem, and he approached there. And he called and he, at, the, at the beginning of Mount Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, tell him the Lord needs it. Can we talk about the donkey for a minute? Remember when the donkey talked to uh, uh, Balaam? You remember that story? If you don't remember that story, I gotta tell you the story. You remember it? You remember? You remember? You remember? Balaam's walking down the road and he's and the and the donkey sees the angel in front of him and the donkey don't want to move. So Balaam starts whooping the donkey and whooping the donkey, but he won't move. So the donkey, he gets off the donkey, and the, and the donkey looks at Balaam and he says, Hey turkey, what you keep whooping me for, man? There's an angel right in front of me. Can't you see? And he tells Balaam, he said, man, I've been a good donkey for a long time. Why do you keep whooping me? And Balaam's like, oh, yeah, now I see the, I see, I see the angel. I always thought to myself in the beginning of my ministry, man, if God can use a donkey to preach a sermon to Balaam, he sure can use me. Right. I'm kind of like a donkey. You know, I got big ears. You know, he's long. You know, kind of got the donkey thing going on, you know. I ain't a, you know, I'm a big donkey, you know, he's a little donkey. And uh, I said, if he could use a, if he could use a donkey, man, man, maybe I 
on the donkey. Amen. Would you listen to me? Can you hear me? <laughs> 